I was originally going to do some other questions, but because I'm going to run out of time, I'm actually going to switch it. And okay. I'm going to jump into the spoiler stuff first and then come back, which, okay. uh, you know. Um, so episode nine is two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, it's a straight on movie. Was at any point, did anyone say, well, maybe we should just do nine and 10 instead of making it two hours and 20 minutes? It was, yeah, I was discussing. I mean, we we talked about it too. I think we just couldn't find a good spot to break it because, you know, there's almost an hour of really build up tension and then it just goes hard for an hour. And then we have our like 25 minutes of the coming down coda. And so there's not really, it would have just not been a very satisfying episode to, to stop it after that first hour. And in our opinion, it just would have sort of petered out and we didn't want to force uh, force an ending. So we just figured, well, it'll just be this monster episode. And if you want to pause it, uh, go, you know, you know, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And pick it up the next night. Uh, did you originally have any different ending for this season? Did it change along the way as you know what I mean? Because sometimes seasons go through big changes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sort of curious if anything really big changed in this one. Not that I remember. It's just sticking the landing is always for for Matt and I. It's such an important part. So when we're breaking a season, that is one of the first things we're talking about. Is where do we want this story to end up? So we're not. So the ending is always sort of that goalpost. Even as we're breaking episode one, we know exactly where we're going. And I don't think we've deviated truly in any season for the finale. We've always stuck to it and i think i believe this the same that the case was the same here. and in terms of who makes it you know who lives or die i i think i think um there was a version where um dimitri mm. aka enzo didn't make it that's true but um other than that other than but they and then he ended up making it that but that that's as radical of a departure from like the original idea versus what we ended up with everything else the ending of season four is, I mean, it sets up a massive thing for next season. It's basically Hawkins is effed, you know, right. with that huge yeah. thing in the middle. Um, yeah. What what can you tease people about season five? Well, I, th I think what, one reason we're excited about it, like we always have wanted to do sort of like an Empire Strikes Back like ending, which we try to do with four, where just like, you know, it's it's the sense of, of loss of like, like, like and, 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 and an unusual for us, at least season five is going to start pedal to the metal. I mean, we're not going to do the ramp up. We're not, there's no time. There's no normalcy, obviously, once you reach the end of four, I mean, it's not like there's going to be time to explore our characters love life. And how is Steve's dating going? And I mean, there's going to be none of that. It's just going to be going a hundred miles an hour from the beginning. I mean, we have like the opening scene for five mapped out. I don't know if it'll stay like that, but it's pretty wild. So yeah, no, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be intense from beginning to end with not so much ramp up. How much did you debate Max being the person who was the fourth victim and all the stuff that happens with her? Uh, you know, I mean, we always knew, I mean, I can't remember how much the max, I mean, we did debate how, what exactly we wanted to do with max, but we knew that she was going to obviously be putting herself in real danger. And I think I'm trying to remember exactly how we landed on where we did with max, but it was, it was pretty early on. I believe that we decided that that's, that was going to be her fate, uh, you know, for, for the end of this season, it, it had, to, it had to be max, um, because she, you know, she, you know, she was targeted. Yeah. Um, and she had never rid herself of this curse. She was just kind of putting a band aid. She was using, you know, effectively Kate Bush or music to, uh, as a, as an armor. And so, you know, it was very early on, you know, it, that, that was the plan that she was going to remove that armor and more or less, um, sacrifice herself to, back then in order to give them a chance to to kill him but both theory. both her and eddie i mean they're really you know from the get-go they are targeted and they're they're both sort of screwed as a result of that in circumstance in the case of of eddie so in some way we see the seasons is i mean they're both doomed in a way since since the beginning of the season different from something like bob or where it's just a shocker it's like these characters are sort of hurtling towards a disaster from very early on uh, in the season. 
Are we done with seeing Russia? We, um, as listen, Anything. things change, things change. It's, it's, it's odd because we did outline, you know, when we were, we shut down for six months, like every, every show, everybody, the whole world shut down for six months. So we did, we do have a full outline for it. Currently, uh, Russia is not in it. I mean, I think, I think one of the things that's exciting about season five is it's, season four was interesting to us because everyone was kind of scattered to the winds. That's what was unique about it. But this is about everyone finally coming back, coming back together, coming back to Hawkins, Hopper back in Hawkins, Hopper back with Olderman, the original group back together, the original group of boys plus 11, like the OG <laughs> group. And like, so there's, a, there's something interesting to sort of re-explore some of the season one dynamics again, uh, except on this grander scale. Yeah, come full circle. Um, I loved the scene with Will in the car talking about Eleven, but he's talking about himself. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a, such a great scene. And I, uh, what can you tease about like Will in the future uh, in terms of, because, you know, I, I really enjoyed what you did. Oh, oh, good. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, I mean, Noah's amazing. I mean, Noah just, I mean, I, we shot that scene. I, I, that was like, a, it's like a half a day shooting that scene from getting every angle. It was an important scene to get right, we felt. But Noah was, I thought, just incredible in that scene. Will's going to be a big part and focus is really all I can say of um, of season five and his journey. But you're starting to see, um, you know, he, this, you know, he he his coming of age, really. Um, which has been, which has been challenging for a number of reasons, um, some of which are supernatural. Um, but you're starting to see him come into his own, and I also love that scene between um, him and Charlie, him and his brother Jonathan, and his brother being there for him. And I think that, that reconnecting with his brother is going to be, and again, that sort of setting up sort of us coming full circle back to season one. And I think you'll see that with a couple of the character arcs, not just with Will, but also with, you know, Steve, Nancy and, and her relationship with Jonathan, where uh, things are not fully resolved. We, you know, they, the characters have maybe made steps, like in the case of Will, but that journey isn't over yet. And that's really, all of that is going to play a huge role uh, as we try to wrap this thing up uh, next season. Do you think uh, Metallica is ready for the amount of people that are going to be listening to Master of Puppets based on what <laughs> happened with Kate Bush? <laughs> I hope I think I've heard Metallica is excited about it, we, um, but I don't know. I haven't I haven't like I haven't I, I haven't spoken to the band or anyone in the band, um, but hopefully I, I hope it does. I, we were talking about this the other day. I was like, I wonder if, if, if that's going to happen for Master of Puppets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Apparently, there is a cat that wants to join this interview. <laughs> you, I mean, you can't predict like the running up the hill, the Kate Bush thing. I mean, it's so it's so bizarre. And then, I mean, I'm not on TikTok, but people are like, "Oh, it's all over TikTok." I don't even really understand what that means, but it's just bizarre how that stuff happens. And whether it happens again with another band, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's certainly the type of thing you're not going to in season five attempt to replicate because you know I've already get asked that question. It's like, what song are you, <clears throat> you know? Um, gonna do in season five. I'm like, we're not gonna do that again because if we do it, we'll fail. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't designed to happen. Yeah, it has to be organic. It's sort of like yeah. the box office success of Top Gun Maverick. You can't yeah, predict right. it's gonna make a billion dollars. It sort of happens. No, you know, yeah, no. And like every phenomenon at Netflix that I can think about, you know, when you're talking about Squid Game and Queen's Gambit, it's like, I mean, you just can't. Um, force that yeah kind of yeah there's nothing mathematical or pre or you know you can't figure it out i mean studios have been trying to figure it out forever but and to, and same with the creatives like oh yeah this is the formula that works the minute you try to use that exact same formula it's going to fail so we won't even attempt it again it, it's ha it's just an un, it's it's kind of an unreal uh or, or surprising um by chance we have this other big musical moment which is uh it's a very different type of musical moment, I guess, with Master. Master it is, but we had to give Eddie his his big moment there. No, com completely. I I had a blast with it. What can you actually say about the hierarchy of the Upside Down? What what is you know what I mean? Like, how much have you actually pulled back the curtain, and how much is sort of like the? Is there some big reveal that you guys have been holding back for season five? 
Yeah. The, the big reveals remain uh, that were, that are coming in season five are really about the upside down itself, which we only start to hint at. You know, there was that moment where we realized in episode seven this year that it's frozen in time. So that is something that we obviously we do do a couple more big reveals in volume two, but it's all related to uh, Vecner Henry and in his journey. But what we haven't really discussed is, is exactly what the upside down is, where what was that where where Vecna was, where Henry was when he was found the mind flare. Where is that? So all of that is going to be th- those are sort of the last big reveals uh, coming in, in season five. How much did you debate exactly the final shot of episode nine, like where you really wanted to end it? That came pretty early. I mean, we knew we wanted to end with spores falling in Hawkins. I don't remember how early in the process, but pretty early in the process. And we wanted that. I mean, the shot, you know, we like like I said, we were very much inspired by Empire Strikes Back, that ending (laughs) where they're where they're, you know, they're looking out the the window, and and so we wanted the shot. We want we knew we wanted to end with the on the backs of our characters as they're looking out towards this dark supernatural plume that was spitting out these spores and on all over their town as they're sort of facing this evil that is not retreated but but very much coming in an aggressive way into their town. We wanted to hint at the notion of war. Um, and a, a supernatural war coming to Hawkins. So I don't know, we had that image really early. We have an amazing concept artist um, who's been with us since season two, Michael Marr, and he drew it up. And we just were really excited to shoot it and finally see it come. We actually just saw it finally kind of come together, the final VFX, yeah. like a week and a half ago or something like that. But the goal, the goal of this one, unlike other seasons, like Matt's saying, is that sense of anticipation where you've set up what the stakes are, which is something we haven't done for other seasons. So we've set the stakes and it's just the, the, the feeling you always want to try to get is that Empire Strikes Back feeling of, oh my God, I'm so excited to see what happens next and the, or, or Fellowship of the Ring as they're just headed off towards Mordor. Like that, that, that's the dream, that's the hope, that's what you're, that's the feeling you want, which we just haven't been able to do before because generally we really wrap up the storylines and then we go, oh, but there's one, there's some horror lurking beneath the surface that the audience sees that, our characters don't necessarily see. In this case, our characters truly see the, the horror. And it's like, how? what are they going to do? How are they going to deal with this? What is their journey going to look like? And so those were the two films that we referenced when we were working on that last shot. Uh, you guys have talked about, and Netflix has talked about, and Sean Levy has talked about uh, the spinoff. Um, and I know Netflix obviously will be desperate to get something. Um, and I know you're not going to tell me what it is. I accept that. But I am curious with how... Per- particular you are and how you like to be involved are you going to be content to sort of just produce a spinoff or do you see yourself doing uh what vince is doing on better call saul and all of a sudden you know he gets pulled back in and he's on another show right yeah i mean we've talked about that a lot we do talk about the vince gilligan situation a lot (laughs) um no i mean i mean ultimately the hope is to you know pass the baton to um somebody else um, you know, because by the time we're done with this, it's going to have been, God, it's going to be almost have been 10 years. It's going to be in my, you know, more or less my entire 30s. And so it would be another, you know, five to 10 year uh, commitment on this thing. And I don't think you can go half in. You know, there's not a version of, and I was telling this to somebody else, there's not really a great version of us, say, doing a pilot and then abandoning it. It's like, no, no, you're in the editing room every day you're in color you're in sound you're either all in or not so what ross and i really are interested in is you know we've been developing the story which we haven't told anybody yet so i don't even know if anyone's gonna like it i we're very excited about it that's all i know but netflix have been cool they haven't been pressuring us very much honestly about it i mean they've been they're they're very shockingly patient with me and ross Keep, keep in mind, they still have another season to get out of you. So I don't think they're concerned about the spinoff until you're done with season five. Maybe. As That's soon as you turn in season five, it's game on. Maybe. Yeah, the pressure is beginning to mount. I, sk- I start to get more text about it, especially as we've been talking about it in the press. You know, we're talking about it in the press and they don't know it. Uh, what the idea is and that's I think maybe not driving them crazy in, in a in like not they're not like upset but they're just they want to know what it is Finn Wolfhard I think I have said this in the press knows what it is only because he guessed it 
So if, if, you, if you actually correctly guess it, I'll tell you, but he's the only one. Um, because yeah, so can I, I do like a 30 minute interview of just guesses? Yeah. Until... No, he, he wasn't like, it wasn't like him machine gunning. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? He just goes, is it that? And then, I, and I think the only way he could do that is, A, he's a really smart kid. He's a really creative kid. And he just knows me and Ross too well. He's known as, yeah, he knows what our sensibilities are and what we're interested in. So anyway, he, I don't know how he figured it but, out. But, you know, we were honestly working on it right before this interview. So I think, you know, because we, yeah. we're done with, we're, you know, we're done with four, obviously, since it's coming out tonight. I don't, I don't so. actually believe, I don't believe you. I'm sure you're going to tweak a shot that's going to be going out, you we know, after it's morning. coming out. This- Steve, we did this morning. <laughs> right. We did, we did tweak, um, it was 20 shots. Got changed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So if you so if you watch it, if if it, the people who watch it stay up tonight and watch it, there's a, it, it'll be it'll be different tomorrow. I'm told tomorrow either morning or afternoon it'll be a little different. Yeah, I'm yeah. not not editing editing. It's just a visual. Oh, no, it's it's no, it's totally it's VFX shot. I get it. No, 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 it's not. Like people think we're like changing the edit. I'm like, no, no, you can't. Oh, you know, no, no, completely. That. Because I'm almost out of time. I do I do want to touch on when do you see yourself filming season five do you have like a start date in mind um you know it's it's a what we're the plan is to be perfectly honest is Matt, we're going to take a, a little uh vacation in july and then we're going to come back i know that the room the writer's room is going to start uh in on the, in that first week of august and at that point we're going to sort of set settle on on some dates uh because we have actors uh asking us every day so we're going to settle on some dates and figure that out but um you know i i I think the the only thing we want maybe this year is to it was really nice to have all the scripts written um so we that is a goal i don't know if we're going to be able to achieve it or not which is to have all scripts written before we begin production um it's the final season it's incredibly important we get the narrative and the story right and we don't want to be doing what we're typically doing when we're writing stranger things which is you know, laying down track as the train is flying. Listen, I'm going to say to you as a fan of the series, I yeah, thought yeah. that this season was so good. And I know it's a result of having all the scripts. It helped. Yeah, right? It definitely helped. It, de- it, made, it made a difference. So we, I mean, yeah, like an, 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 an additional time. We never have time to go back. It's but like, you turn in a script and it's, it's shooting the next, uh, it's wild. I mean, there's something really exhilarating about that. I do... I do find that pressure really fun. It like actually having that gun to our head had made has made me and Ross better, more creative writers. But that being said, I think we can still move relatively fast and get get it all down on paper so we can look at it as a whole. Because never before has it been important to get the whole right. Yeah. Um, because we have to, as Ross was saying, every storyline has to be resolved. Um, whether it's satisfying or not to people, I don't know, but it needs to be satisfying to us. It needs to, you know, the actors need to be, well, you know, and we want the these, actors are happy. And we want to give the characters their moments and, and allow, you know, a lot of these characters have been evolving over the course of, you know, these four seasons. Well, and so it'll be the fifth, five seasons of them. And so we want to make sure that they all land in, in a, in a way that we all feel good about. We do feel good about the ending. We feel like we do feel like we got the last 20 the, minutes. The last, so they're they're kind of locked in. Like I told you, sticking the landing is so, that was like the, the biggest relief. It was like, so okay, I, I was like, okay, I think I, this ending is not, I'm not super insecure. I'm insecure about a lot of things, but no, I feel like the ending feels good. Yeah. I hope it feels, it feels right. We'll see. Definitely no pressure to end this series right. No, I'm sure you're not feeling anything. No, no, not, no pressure at all. Steve. No, not, not at all. All right, so let me ask you a few quick things about season sure. five. Do you think it's going to be nine episodes, eight episodes, ten? Do you even know? No. Well, we thought this season. You know, that's why I hate to say because we thought it was going to uh, season four was going to be eight seasons and they were going to be regular length. Um, so if you had interviewed us before four, that's what I would have said. I think we're aiming for eight again. We don't want it to be 13 hours. We're aiming for more like 10 hours or something. I think it's going to be longer than, say, a season one because we just have so much to wrap up. But I don't think it's going to be as long as season four. But do not hold me to that because. But again, it'll help that it can speak. You know, this season, for instance, it was two hours before our characters even realized the monster was killing people in Hawkins. So we, they know what the threat is now. And so that will help speed it up. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, that exactly. So we're almost, it's all, that's where we feel like we're going to lose a couple hours 
in that in that ramp up. One of the things about season four is it's just effing massive in terms right. of all over the place. Do you is season five gonna be like this world like going outside of Hawkins? Are you you know like the way you did in season four, or is it a lot more contained? where it's really about the 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 what's coming up out of Hawkins. Yeah, it's it's in it's, it's it's mostly in Hawkins and a lot in you know there's a lot obviously in the upside now. Which is exciting and also not exciting because I just I swear half my life is spent looking at spore shots <laughs> and just going that spore's too big, that spore just flew through the body of our character. Um anyway, so that's you know, I don't want to think how many hours of my life have been spent watching sport shots and will be watching and looking at sport of visual effect shots. So I'm totally curious in terms of you guys divided the release because of, you know, VFX shots and getting everything yes. done. Well, so it was the yeah. first seven episodes and then eight and nine going into season five, I'm sure Netflix wants to do something similar in terms of a staggered release and not give them all at the same time. Or is it something that you, you know what I mean? Have you already started thinking about in the writing process? Maybe we want episodes one through four to be part one and five through eight to be part two. Right. I mean, it would be, I mean, no, listen, we actually haven't gotten into those discussions with Netflix. I don't know if maybe everyone's waiting to see how this um, split happened, but yeah, you're right. The, the split resulted. Yeah. It was two things. I mean, I mean, one of it, yeah. The, the episodes. Um, yeah. I mean, really the episodes were not done. Weren't going to all be done by May and just wanting to get it out as fast as possible, but it was did not designed to split. But I like what you're saying, which is if we were to do a split again, right more to the split, you know, right to the split, which we didn't do this. I mean, it kind of, we're lucky that seven had uh, that kind of ending with the Vecna reveal um, that that was just sort of fortunate. It was just extremely challenging to get seven episodes out by May. I think that was the most challenging thing we've ever faced um, while making Stranger Things. J J and so if we were to do it again, I would probably make the split earlier, like you're saying, and I would I would write it into the narrative. No, com um, completely. Right. It, it, I personally, yeah. I, I, uh, I listen, I would love to see all eight at once, but there's also like people talk about it more it's when fun. it's split up. Like yeah. it's more it's than it's fun. More, yeah. Like it's I know for us, it's way better that you guys split it up. Like we're able to keep writing about it. You right. know, and get, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's such a balancing act because I also like as a consumer, I like, you know, I fell in love with TV, really with Sopranos, but I was not I was not watching it real time. I was watch, getting the DVDs on mail in Netflix and just just devouring it. And so it's such a balancing act. But I like I do enjoy like what we did this season and that you got a little bit, you know, get a bit of both worlds and that you were able to devour a lot of content and get into the characters and story. But at the same time, allow for discussion. And, and all that in between so we'll see we'll, well i don't know it's interesting i think that's the kind of stuff that we're going to start i think about. netflix is open you know we'll we'll you know i'm sure they'll have thoughts <laughs> i'm sure they'll have. how much have you guys thought about do you have a lot of deleted scenes and cool stuff that has never been seen and are you purposely saving it for maybe like an ultimate you know box set that could no, come yeah, out we don't it's so weird we don't delete scene i think there's been um one deleted scene in season one or two do we have two deleted scenes well, i course? remember one from season one and then one from this season but they're so boring it's not like some exciting uh deleted scene they're just really oh they're, yeah it was like it was like just a like an a, like a, a 20 second driving car scene because usually what we do is the scenes there's always a reason for the scenes and so usually rather than cutting scenes if a scene isn't um, it, it's hurting the patient or whatever, Matt and I will just really trim it and tighten it up as much as we can. It's generally what we're doing. We're not right. chopping scenes. So there's not some magical backlog of uh, deleted scenes to be. There released. are lots of deleted lines, but not a lot of deleted scenes. Are you, are you thinking, though, at all after the show is done about doing like a big 4K Blu-ray box set type thing? Is it have you even thought about it? Kind of. We're honestly think. Am I allowed to talk about that? <laughs> sure. I, we're thinking almost the opposite. I want to like a V and Netflix finally agreed. I was like, I was like, I've been bugging them about this forever, but I want to like a VHS pan and I want a pan and scan version of uh, at least season one. I just want to try to pan and scan it. We're gonna play and it through, put it through a VCR. Hit the VCR hit it a couple times. Put it on Netflix. At least in the, the nerd in me loves it. The nostalgic factor. We had our colorists do 
the opening scene of season one pan and scan for us. It's just, awesome. Just for fun. And it was just brought back so many memories. But we'll, we'll hopefully we'll do the Blu-ray. We'll do the 4K. We'll do, we'll do the well. beautiful thing. And then we'll do the pan and scan. It's been formatted for your TV. I, I do think that it, it pains me with streaming how many things can be done and they don't do. And like what you're saying is releasing a VHS version of yeah. season one pan and scan on Netflix. Yeah. So it yeah. looks like you're watching a VHS tape. Like that's cool. Like people so. should be doing more of this. I don't know. I mean, no, and they, were, and they were like, "Oh, it'd be its own. It wouldn't be embedded. It'd be its own separate thing." Like Stranger Things VHS for whatever it is. And um, anyway, I'm excited about. It. We'll see if it happens. They feel like they finally. Well, now that they're they're annoyed about us asking. So well, now I, that you we've said it on this interview, it has. They to have to do it. That's yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be not happy. No, I'm just kidding. They'll be fine. They, they've already. I guess okay. I'm gonna ask this. Uh, like D and D is obviously like a key source of inspiration for the series. Um, can you speak to its influence on the writing and how writing a season is similar to crafting a campaign? Okay. It is sim I mean, it is similar to crafting a campaign. Although it's odd, I always say it's like Ross and I actually, um, we, we actually are big board game players, did not play a ton of D&D &D growing up. It was like, because we were early, actually early 90s, ki 90s kids and it was like Magic the Gathering was the thing. Magic the Gathering was... You know, our biggest obsession and the first movie we ever made was an hour long magic the gathering movie i mean it was just us ha you know hacking at each other with plastic swords but what i love about D, &D and i've you know grown to love about it even more so is yeah the, the storytelling and the creativity that's you know that's involved in it and so it's and, and 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 the wealth of amazing monsters that are involved. So it was a very early idea that we had, you know, when we settled on, obviously magic didn't exist and we settled on, okay, well, it's going to have to be D&D, &D, which Ross and I did play, just not obsessively. Um, and, you know, we settled on that. And, and then it, I think it was not until we were a couple scripts into writing season one that we realized well, they would call the bad guy, the villain, the Demogorgon. They would name him after one of the creatures in the D&D &D mythology. And so that's kind of ended up s sticking. And the, the idea that the kids are using this game in order to explain and understand the unexplainable, the bizarreness that's happening around us. So I know it's been, we're really glad we kind of accidentally had them playing, not accidentally, but had this opening scene of them playing D&D, &D, which is almost as much an homage to E.T. as anything else. Yes, sure.